All right, what is up guys? I am here with my friend Sam, who is someone who uh, mainly played Yu-Gi-Oh! as a kid and has amassed this amazing collection that I wanted to show off for you guys. And I know you guys like this type of content where we look at old collections and uh, look at some cards that may be either just really cool to see, cards you hadn't seen in two decades, or cards that might be valuable. Although I don't claim to be any kind of like super vintage collector or anything like that, spending tons of money on old cards with the express purpose to make money off of them. This is just a fun thing. But uh, when he first showed me this binder, I was blown away by the amount of valuable old cards that are in here. Because uh, you stopped playing like, like 2006, right? 2006 or seven, yeah, right around there. Was, yeah. So yeah. like right in the in the like the middle of the GX era, and due to just listening to me and Michelle go on and on about the game while you're here at the house. You got you got bullied into picking the game back up again. Yeah. And building like three of the best decks in the game immediately right off the bat. Um, so I've got you fully in on the deep end addicted to this game again. But um, in the meantime, <laughs> this this collection's not going anywhere. So I really wanted to show this off. Um, and you have this sorted uh, by rarity as well. So um, now those of you who know... Older ultimate rares, especially first edition ultimate rares, are lots and lots of money. I actually have an ultimate rare first edition uh, bubble man like this, and the uh, collector app that I have values it at like two hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> so, so that one's hella money. Um, this one's hella money. Um, this one, this is kind of a cool card. It's actually played in goat format a little bit. There's a strategy called Reasoning Gate, which uh, mills this card on top of your deck, and you hit it eventually. So that's a really cool card to see. Um, man, <laughs> so the Creator First Edition Ultimate Rare, that's huge as well. I'll have to look that one up, but that one is worth an absurd amount of money as well. Uh, Diamond Dude, being that he's a, he a hero monster, uh, is very popular as well. There's there was also a deck. It was really popular, I think, around 2007. That was, I honestly just think it was called like Diamond Dude Turbo, or there was. Oh yeah, there I was do a, remember that. Yeah, there was a couple of different hero decks that used him. So he is, you know, it's only cool to see him in an Ultimate Rare First Edition, but he is really popular from that era. Um, sh <laughs> shout out to Submarine Roid being really good in. Uh, like the tag force games and that kind of thing when playing against the AI because being able to like poke your opponent for 800 and put it in defense and stall out is really good against really weaker opponents in the early game. Um, another Banisher of Radiance. Um, system down ultimate rare is huge. Uh, that card is played in Edison format to counter the Machina decks. Uh, just lots of really cool uh, first edition ultimate rares here. So then we get I, into... I forgot I had a ultimate rare Phantasmal for... Yeah. We kind of get into secret rares here. A couple more. Um, what is that? DD Trap Hole. I don't know if that one played, is played a whole lot. Dimension Wall, I think, is played in certain formats. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we get the secret rare here. And uh, if I'm, is this the original? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So this is one of the, the GB, GB1 uh, God cards, which are the really valuable ones. And the ones that have more... Uh, fakes made of them than anything else. So this one's authentic, obviously, and uh, I may attempt to take it out so we can kind of show it off here if I'm yeah, sure. super careful. <laughs> but yeah. um, the, 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 everybody the... thinks that their god cards are worth a ton of money, and usually they're not because they're usually not this exact printing. But yeah, this is cool. the, the GB1 Ultra Rare and Secret Rare ones are the god cards that actually have value, and of course it... It has the um, the red back. Or actually, does that? It has a regular colored back. That's interesting. It's mostly it's darker. If you put it like next to the other ones, it is darker. Let me try to be very careful just not to. Against one of those. Yeah, but it's not like the red, like the not late, the, the, super, super red, the Shonen no. Jump promo version they did no. a little bit later that my brother has, and I think I'm, I have as well. But yeah, super cool to see that. Um, Tomb Blue Eyes. From MRL is huge. That one's not first edition. Um, Exodia Necros. I think these are Master Collection 2. These two right here. Mm -hmm. um, the rest are... Uh, these are Collector's 10. And that one is... That one's not 
quite as sought after, but it's still cool to see. It's a from the era where sets only had two secret rares in the entire set, mm -hmm. and so you were very unlikely to pull them. Now, I put this here. This was originally not in um, his binder. I found it behind another card in a mis in a tin somewhere. So he had a uh, first edition ultra rare Mask of Restrict, and I was pulling the Mask of Restrict out of the sleeve to look at the condition because it was like perfectly near mint. And I saw th the stats and everything behind it, and I literally like, gasped out loud. I said, oh my God. So first edition Pharaoh Servant Genzo in perfect condition. We we uh, valued this thing at low at three hundred and fifty dollars, right around yeah. And then we developed our own abstract uh, currency based around the value of this Genzo. Yeah, get, um, get yours today. Yeah, uh, Master Collection uh, Sphinx is kind of cool. You don't really see that a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, this version of Machine King, I think, is a is a Duelist League promo or a. Um, Video game promo, and what's interesting is it's a video game promo. It's technically a super rare, but it has the a white name, which is really weird. Um, it was this is like just it was weird how they printed this card. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then yeah anything is, on the back is just something I have more of. Yeah, um, Serpent Knight Dragon looks like it's in pretty good shape there. A Lob Trihorn Dragon is huge. Um, because I, I do not believe that this is an upper deck version. So, um, uh, trying to find an original secret rare Trihorn Dragon is pretty tough because of the upper deck, the Konami upper deck, uh, split from back in the day. But knowing most of the cards you tend to have, um, I'd be willing to bet that this is an authentic LOB one. Mm -hmm. Uh, just looking at sort of the, the character of the way that it's printed, you can kind of tell by the coloration of it if it's an upper deck one. And um, this is super cool to see. I, I would love to one day have one of these. And um, not a first edition, but it was, it took years for this card to be reprinted um, as a super rare in the Yugi's Legendary Collection. Um, we've got the um, GB1 Raw, which again is really expensive. Uh, Collector's 10 Blue Eyes, Collector's 10 Dark Magician, Master Collection Relinquished. Um, not a Serpent Knight Dragon. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other Dark Magician I run in branded is a different. I had it in there and I pulled it out so I can actually play it. Yeah, we've got uh, again same thing. Secret Rare Lob Gaia, not in perfect condition, but you can definitely tell it is there. just kind of by. I, and I, I always tell people as well. I think this is the same printing as the other one. It's the 2003 Collector's Tin one. This one's still valued at like thirty five dollars. We found out, um, and it's in perfect condition as well. Um, yeah, I always tell people you can kind of tell if a foil from one of these old sets is actually from like 2002, 2003, or if it's one of the Legendary Collection reprints because there's a certain texture to the surface of the card with these older ones that the newer ones don't have. And so this guy, the Dragon Champion as well, uh, Trihorn Dragon and, Dra and Dragon Champion were the only two secret rares in LOB. Um, other cards like Blue Eyes and Monster Reborn were printed at Ultra Rare instead of Secret. Um, to, to see that in its original rarity and in great condition is is always awesome, even if it's not a first edition. Be trying to be extremely careful with these uh, with these corners here. I believe in you. Uh, Master Collection Thousand Eyes Restrict. I I got one of those from that random bulk that I bought. At that store, I showed in another, in another video, but it's in way, way worse condition than this. This one's way better off. Um, Graceful Dice in good condition. Another Thousand Dragon. Mm -hmm. um, video game promo, uh, Ryoku. This is where I just lost my shit when we looked at this the, <laughs> the previous time. So, LOB Exodia pieces. They are on limb, but they are from that era. And LOB Exodia pieces go for a ton of money. Um, and you wouldn't you wouldn't believe this, but even the um, started at Yugi and started at Kaiba, Blue Eyes and Dark Magician, even the on limbs, if they're in good condition, they do go for a little bit of money too. Usually, um, sometimes it's like ten, fifteen, twenty dollars, something like that, maybe more, depending on condition. So. These do have value, even though these are the ones that technically everybody had back in the day. It's just so hard to find them in good condition because there were so many of them, and a lot of them were very heavily played. Um, 
Beast of Talwar, a first edition from Metal Raiders, is huge. Really? Oh no, um, Ferro Servant, not uh, not Metal Raiders. Right. Uh, Ferro Servant. Um, yeah, so another first edition from the era, LOB Red Eyes, which I would love to one day have a copy of. Um, first edition Legendary Fisherman, first edition Toon Mermaid, um, and Ultra Rare. Those are both huge as well. Um, and the hits just don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> like. A, a uh, what is that? An Lob Dark Magician. I believe so. It sure is. Um, yeah, Lob Dark Magician again. Not a first ed. Uh, more Lob Exodia pieces, and then there's a common Exodia piece there. Um, people like to complain about modern card text being too complicated, and not making any sense. Read the original card text of Toon Dark Magician Girl. <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's so small you can actually physically barely read it. Um. First edition Ferro Server Buster Blader, uh, Metal Raiders Barrel Dragon is huge. Uh, first edition uh, Fiber Jar is huge. I had one of these back in the day and I traded it like an idiot. Um, Spell Canceler actually kind of saw play recently, and if this card wasn't reprinted in the uh, Speed Duel Battle City box or in the uh, Duel Devastator, it would be worth a lot of money. And actually, Lava Golem is seeing a lot of play right now too. This is a um, this is a dark. Dark Revelation Volume 1 Lava Golem and Ultra Rare, because the original uh, Pharaonic Guardian uh, Lava Golem was Secret Rare. Mm. Um, another another Barrel Dragon. Uh, what is that? A Dark Revelation. Yeah, uh, that's actually another Duelist League card, that, that Super Rare Buster Blader. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, uh, the Sacred Beast. Almost forgot. Um, yeah, so, first edition... Sacred Beasts as well from, from Shadow of Infinity are worth a crap ton of money as well. Mainly the Ultimate Rares, hmm. but uh, we need to double check and look look it back up because First Edition Ultra Rare Uriah I think is worth a lot of money and you've got one First and one on Limb, both from Shadow of Infinity. Um, Ultra Rare Ancient Gear Golem is worth a fat stack of money. I think the Ultimate Rare Ancient Gear Golem is worth more than $200. Um, and uh, I actually have two of these ultra rare ancient gear golems, although not first edition. And then um, just wow, <laughs> just uh, for, I have uh, multiples of that one. Yeah, Lob Exodia head uh, again, not first set, but absolutely huge. Um, first edition ultra rare goblin attack force. I actually have been looking for these. I have two, but I would like a third for my go, go format deck. Um, because unfortunately, there's not a contemporary printing of Goblin Attack Force in the, in foil. It was only that original um, Ferro Servant printing that was an ultra rare. And maybe a cheap way to get ultra rares would be the ultra rare printing from the new 25th anniversary Legendary Collection. Which, those printings are so different from the previous Legendary Collection and from the original printing. That they're actually listed separately on the Yu-Gi-Oh card database, which is on the Neuron app. So you can you can definitely tell that it's a modern reprint, but that might be a cheaper way to get ultra rares of that. God, I have another one, another <laughs> another LB Exodia head, um, Magic Ruler Relinquished with the again. People say modern card tech sucks. Read Magic Ruler Relinquished. It is an absolute nightmare. They it is so long and convoluted. They actually forgot to put its. Um, Ritual summoning requirements on it. It's insane. Um, all of the hero fusions from early GX are worth a crap ton of money as well. So first edition Dark Neos, first edition Shiny Phoenix Enforcer I have are worth a lot. more of those too because I had a hero deck. So they're in the hero deck still. So I have a uh, Flaming Wingman original. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's first edition. Uh, if you have ultimate rares of any of the heroes from the first couple of GX sets, they are worth them. a fast stack of money. Um, first edition Cyber End Dragon as well. Um, so for context, Cybernetic Revolution, the set that first printed Cyber Dragon, was a very popular set because Cyber Dragon was so powerful. Mm -hmm. So pretty much all of the foils, especially the ultimate rares from from Cybernetic Revolution, are they're all valuable. Like pretty much all of them. So first edition Cyber End Dragon is huge. Another magical <laughs> relinquished. Yeah. Why not? Um, these are really cool. Ultra rare, uh, first edition creature swap, first edition mage power. Um, I think I, I have an original ultra rare megamorph. 
Um, I've got Megamorph and Axe of Despair, but I would love to have the Ultra Rare Creature Swap. I think that's on my list for my collection. Mm -hmm. um, and I have too, so. Funny thing about, uh, this is uh, first edition Last Warrior as well, which is huge, but my brother actually pulled his original uh, Labyrinth of Nightmare Last Warrior from a vending machine. <laughs> It was one of those, one of those like oh, card ass yeah, machines yeah, yeah. where you put the coins in and get cards out, and he pulled uh, Last Warrior from that. It was really funny. Yep, sure do have more of those. Um, there's um, Mask of Restrict, not even the only Mask of Restrict you have. Mm -mm. First edition Destiny board. Um, we get to super rares here, um, and a lot of all of them. Yeah, so for the most part, uh, Celtic Guardian and Curse of Dragon from LOB is huge. Mystical Elf from LOB. Um, Harp Lady Scissors from Metal Raiders. I see a Luster Dragon somewhere that's like priced at 30. Yeah. Um, super Where's... Rare Gate Guardian pieces, Super Rare Karibo. Um, I always loved the foiling on Revival Jam because yeah. it's just the guy is this part that's foil. And I used to have one, uh, another card I used to have back in the day that I traded, unfortunately. Um, and another Revival Jam. Um, yeah, I'll have duplicates on most of these just because, you know, super rares. Yeah, Twin Headed Behemoth, uh, soft once per duel <laughs> effect, which is really funny. What super rare folding is Dark Neck? Oh, it's another um, another uh, Duelist League one. Uh, mm -hmm. Dark Beginning 1, Duelist Tune. Um, uh, LB Man Eater Bug, which I also need for my LB format deck because I have that deck pretty much entirely foiled out. But again, the only I don't like using the vintage printings in my old school decks. I like using modern rarity upgrades of old cards for retro decks. But with Manier Bug, the only foil printing of it in existence is the LOB one. So if I want to completely bling out my LOB deck, I've got to use that that version of him. Um, Kaiko is awesome. Uh, first edition Bazoo, the Soul Eater is crazy. Good old bazoo. Um, I think it's a video game promo copy man there. Yeah, probably. Um, first edition Thestalos is really cool. Demise and Ruin are, are always cool. Uh, older cards, people, fan favorites of those. First edition Ruin. Mm -hmm. um, first edition Cyber Twin Dragon, I'm sure, is worth money. Um, what printing of Thousand Eyes Restrict is another? I think it's another Duelist League um, Thousand Eyes Restrict. I have another one of those somewhere, too. Like, this is somehow not all of my collection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very, very impressive. This is another card that, so just like the Machine King I mentioned earlier, this is one of those cards that they, they just misprinted, like, every copy of it for some strange reason. So the um, Dark Spirit of Silent is a super rare, but the, the title is just in black for no reason, which on trap cards, it's usually always the title is in white. But for some reason, they just decided to print that one in black, even though the foiling is still super rare. It's just really strange. Uh, first edition Dust Tornado is awesome. First edition Grave Robber. Uh, Hell, first edition Mirror Wall as well. Uh, th that card is starting to become more popular as people play older formats in a limited variety or they play Lego like, format. I used to hate this card because of the life point cost. Uh, and I never remember seeing it actually played back in the day, but people are starting to kind of warm up to it. Um, another first edition Dust Tornado. Um, confiscation, giant true nade, mind control. Um, for some reason, they this always made me laugh back in the day because Pot of Greed from LOB was printed as a rare, but Jar of Greed, a worse card in every way, was printed as a super rare in its respective set that it released in. I mean, if anybody can figure out what Pot of Greed does, yeah, let us know. Be super rare. Let us know in the comments. Um, in the comments. First edition limiter removal. Um, MRL Black Illusion Ritual is cool. Uh, first edition Pot of Avarice is cool. Um, Ultimate Rares of that are really expensive as well. Mm. Um, another limited removal. Lightning Vortex. Painful Choice. Oh, you have. it looks like you have multiple Painful Choices. I do. I probably have like four or five of them in there. I make multiple Painful Choices on a daily basis. Yes, don't we all? <laughs> no, it looks like there's only three. Only three? <laughs> yeah. Don't mock me. Yeah, yeah there's three. Yeah. That would be uh, necessary for a uh, pre pre bane list um, deck when you mm -hmm. could do Yada Lock with uh, the Chaos Emperor Dragon. I definitely didn't do that too. Yeah, that's definitely not why I have three. First edition Knock is really cool. Um, looks like you've got a play set of that too, or even more. 
Um, and what I love back here, I won't, I won't show all this, but you have like you have like a handwritten list of the of the cards in the binder, which I think oh yeah, I used to the most amazingly awesome like future proofing. Um, and I really wanted to show this off. So you have a couple of Japanese cards in here, and if I'm not mistaken, this I think is the original, original, original printing of, of Crush card. It's yeah, shame it's in such bad shape. So it was released in uh, Premium Pack 5 or something like that? Um, yeah, I don't know why it's in such bad shape, but it is definitely yeah, one so of the this, worst cards I've Yeah, so this was ravaging Japanese format in 1999. It definitely was. <laughs> um, that is insane. And then I want to say that the very first booster in Japan... So Flame Swordsman was a super rare in English. He was an ultra rare in Japan. And then I think Gaia was also a ultra rare in he was Gaia was an ultra rare in English, but I think this one was actually from either the um the starter box out of Japan, the very very first set, very very first product or the very very first uh, booster set was um this Gaia. So although I'm probably no I'm wrong because this is the so without going too crazy, there's three different iterations of the. We were just talking about card frames earlier. Yeah. The the Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh card frames went through three different iterations in Japan. The first iteration, the uh, stat box down here was a little bit bigger, and there were no spell and trap icons like quick effect or continuous or anything like that. So even a trap like trap hole said you have to destroy it after it's resolved or whatever. And if it doesn't say that, then by extension, it's continuous, right? Mm -hmm. And so then they did the first reiteration where they they reformatted the, the text box, made the stat box a little bit shorter, introduced the icons, and then they did the, te the text box that we know now where it's not a box like this. It's just down here. Yeah. And that was the format they adapted with the, uh, the TCG card frames. So all the TCG card frames have always been the same. But... Um, yeah, so that um, that pretty well wraps it. Is there anything else you wanted to? Um, I don't think there's anything else I brought with me that's old, other than the Jinzo and the Dark Magician. That I'm yeah, we had because to... I don't have any not old ones. Yeah, we had to show off that Jinzo, but yeah, that's um, that's gonna do it for that. Uh, Sam, really appreciate you bringing this over to show this off. This is an awesome older collection, worth God knows how much. <laughs> I'm sure somebody watching will be like, you know. Just, just give me a ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> ballpark so yeah. it's probably worth, you know, several hundred to a couple thousand maybe. So um, at least. It's but probably yeah. about how much went into getting it. <laughs> probably, yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.